Hello, Hannah Ranger. How are you Hi. doing? Good, thank you. <laughs> um, just before we get started, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're recording this virtual studio on the unsurrendered traditional lands of the Algonquin people. And uh, my name is Lisa Cowan, and I work for PATH in communications. And I'm really excited to be uh, stepping into the studio of Hannah Ranger. Um, and uh, yeah, and actually I just see her, her dog walk by. So it actually is a studio with a, a real mm -hmm. live dog. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, how are you do, how are... my security system, your security system. Yeah. So um, your, so where is your studio? I have a studio at Plastics Artistes de Ferrelton in Ferrelton, Quebec. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. know when I, when I go there and I, I always want to go into your studio because it looks so inviting because there's so many incredible works on the wall and then it always seems like I'm in a rush and I'm kind of walking by and looking in and, and, and just marveling at, at what you're doing. Um, so this, I just want to talk a little bit just to uh, introduce viewers uh, to, uh, to what we're doing in terms of the project Art Beyond Borders. Uh, so the project uh, has sprung from the forced virtual cont contacts that artists locally and globally have been faced with since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Um, and one of the opportunities that has arisen from this enormous challenge has been artists making connections and forging collaborations that are linked to their artistic process and professional development. Um, so I just like to ask you, Hannah, what, um, when COVID, so this is, we're going back almost two years ago now, um, how did things change for you or what was just in terms of your, you know, your art, your art practice? I mean, going back to almost two years, what was, what was going on for you then? Well, actually, um, Two years ago, in the in March of 2020, I was actually in Oaxaca, Mexico, where okay. I'd been traveling for the previous three, four years, mm -hmm. um, forging connections with uh, artists down there who work with wool, uh, in particular wool that's dyed with um, just plants and insects and uh, natural elements of the landscape of that valley, and it's oh. a, a very old tradition. So. I had been um, that March finally met with finally met someone who I really wanted to mentor with in terms of learning more about these dyes and learning more about preparing materials for myself that would I think really accentuate my work and bring a lot of um, a lot of soulfulness to my work. Um, so yeah, I was actually there when the pandemic was announced. So uh, we came back to Canada in the midst of the, sh the shutdown of everything. Mm -hmm. And so as time crept by, I realized, yeah, that it might be a while before I'm able to continue with that particular goal. And um, I haven't quite managed over the couple of the almost two years to like use the digital technology to stay connected with that community. It really feels like something that has to happen in person for me. And um, so I sort of switched my gaze, uh, in that spring, um, a filmmaker, uh, named Joseph Wenkoff contacted me with a proposal to, uh, use my work in some filmmaking, um, and in particular in creating potentially virtual reality environments with my work. So mm -hmm. that's been my focus over the past couple of years. I loved his idea. I loved his proposal. I loved the way he um, understood my work and the kinds of things that he perceived in my work that he felt would be good for his project. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I was facing, like, how do I present my work digitally? Because it's such a, I'm a felt maker, and I work with natural fibers. And obviously, my interest in searching out fibers that's, you know, that are dyed by, from materials from the land, I obviously have, like, this, mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, it's tactility, it's, it's being in the presence of the fibers that really mm -hmm. makes the work special and people really respond mm -hmm. very sensorially to my work. And I always feel that photography doesn't quite do it justice 
Film, on the other hand, has that potential. And so working with Joseph, we have um, been filming my work with telescopic lenses and macroscopic lenses and starting to explore virtual reality cameras and potentially even creating three, 360 kind of environments through film of environments that I create out of fiber. So, uh, so yeah, I think yeah, that's one of the big ways that Mm -hmm. This pandemic has uh, sort of steered me into another direction that was kind of always simmering mm -hmm. as a, a, an idea in the background of this idea of using film to bring people right into the work and have a more intimate experience of the work. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so far, yeah, that's uh, it's been an interesting journey. With yeah, that, with new technology and using new equipment and um, having to collaborate a lot more than I've had to before and, and okay. realizing there's this giantly steep learning curve. And how did, uh, so this, this came out, um, you know, after the pandemic was, was announced and everything, and I'm just wondering this collaboration, how did, how did it, uh, how did it form? I mean, you know, with the two of you working together, collaborating, there's, there was obviously, I mean, obviously he had to be there with your work and, and filming. So how did that, um, how, what was that like? Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's still both kind of solitary work when I'm creating the piece to be filmed, I'm just in my studio on my own. Okay. Um, but Joe and I have had to spend time together and just, practice distancing yeah. but it's been pretty much just the two of us and uh you know respecting each other's space but he had his studio where I would set up my piece so he could work on it and okay. I have my studio where I could work on my piece mm -hmm. um and you know when he's editing I mean again it's yeah we're pretty much yeah. pretty solitary in in our processes Mm -hmm. um, but we did have a lot of meetings. We had a lot of uh, walks in the initial phases. We would meet and walk. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I remember so the early part of the pandemic, and we were really, you know, mm -hmm. in in that whole every like there was no planes in the skies, and that that's when Joe and I first started talking about it. And we had many nice long walks and talks about how to use this right. um, opportunity, mm -hmm. how to, where we wanted to go with with. Um, what kind of product we wanted to create. Mm -hmm. I've seen some uh, um, some aspects of that of, of that film. I know it's still or two films, I guess. I know that that it's that the collaboration is still ongoing, but I when I was watching it, I was thinking about about the idea of I uh, you know which you do when when you know, you look at your work of tactility and the, the experience of the fibers and the, the physicality of it. And I was wondering, um, you know, how this is immersive and it's virtual reality and like how much, like this is kind of, you know, an open-ended question. I don't necessarily know if there's a response to it or if, but you know, how, how, like I, I, cause you can feel when you see the film, you can feel the, the, the tactility, if that's a word, the physicality of your piece and it, and, and the experience, you know, on some level you are experiencing that in your body. It's, I'm, it's, you know, perhaps not the same as being, you know, right there in the same space as your work, but, but there is that, there is that, that, uh, that body experience, right. That physicality, which, which kind of surprised me when I saw it, how much, like when I watched part of the film, how much of it actually was, I was experiencing that way. So it's, it's really, it's really fascinating. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. Cause yeah, the idea is that um, there is that feeling you have when you see the work in person. So how can I use digital technology to even to either augment that or offer something that would otherwise be completely impossible to experience, yeah. which is more the the point for me. It's like to right. give people right. that that experience of being sort of shrunk down and then in really inside mm -hmm. of the pieces. 
Exactly. You have this feeling that you're, you know, inside that, that landscape and you're traveling, you're voyaging through the, you know, the tendrils and it's, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess it, I mean, that is, is not only a testament to, to you as an artist, but also to him and his ability to, to, to show that. Right. And also through the music, which is, which is very, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really beautiful and there's different moods with the music, you know, it's, it's not all the same. It's, it shifts. So, yeah, I'm really, really lucky to be working with these collaborators. So there's Joe Wenkoff, who his film, his eye and his intention and his ability to storytell through mm-hmm. videography is really top notch and, and, and so sympathetic with what I care about. Mm-hmm. We have so many conversations where our ideas about the world just really overlap. So I really trust him implicitly with that aspect of things and his editing is uh, amazing. And then I'm also collaborating with Kalina Ostrowska who is, uh, who creates these wonderful electronic uh, compositions, uh, soundscapes for the work. And again, I've always felt just like she, I, her work often springs I, uh, ideas for work that I'll create afterwards. So it seemed like a natural, a natural fit. Yeah. Now, this is probably a good segue to uh, talk about um, Nico Williams, who you're working with in collaboration for uh, Art Beyond Borders. And I mean, it it would seem, sorry, my, <laughs> my cat wants to go out in the snowstorm, apparently. Um, but it would it would seem like there's, you know, quite a few differences between you. But at the same time, there's this, you know, um, I mean, the, you're working with, tradi- I mean, you're doing a a practice that is that is traditional but you're you're kind of you're breaking new ground with it i mean i think of his his work which is traditional bead work but the things that he's doing with with the beads uh you know i think he calls himself a structural bead artist so it's very different and i i see that there's a lot of um there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of similarities between, or not, maybe not a lot, but, but in, in that way of using a traditional practice and making it something different, right? Yeah, yeah, I noticed that his work, he has a lot of like sculptural potential in his work and a lot of sculptural components, which is something that I'm moving more and more towards or that I've always incorporated, but uh, certainly right. for this work that I'm, I'm doing over the next year at least if not a couple years um is creating environments so the the work really needs to be dimensional and and uh sculptural and uh Mm. i've also been just recently incorporating new materials into my practice so learning how to bring in um handmade paper into the felt work which is it's just it's wonderful because it's enabling me to sculpt the work more. The, the paper actually allows me to create more structured felt and lighter weight felt that can be molded into, into forms. So mm-hmm. that is part of what I'm going to be applying in this project for Art Beyond Borders is incorporating the paper and um, creating mm-hmm. these uh, mm-hmm. a more structural piece. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have anything in your studio that that is connected to the that working with that paper the paper or you know I really wish I did but I actually I had a bunch of samples and prototypes but I actually gave them to Joe because he's doing some tests with the cameras with them so it's something I guess you're gonna have to wait for but yes exactly (laughs) well that that's really exciting um yeah I love I love paper. I know whenever I go into any kind of paper store that has like paper from Japan or different, you know, the textures, it's just, yeah, it's, it's so beautiful and there's so many different kinds, you know, so. uh, And it's a similar process to felt making, paper making. And what I've learned is that you can um, actually felt paper together if it's the right, as long as the paper is unsized and it's like the right type of fiber, you can, uh, use it to you can create sculpture without using any kind of adhesive uh, so there's a process that you can oh, do wow. that with and in this case it's fusing it with wool and it's mm. yeah it's actually really mind-blowing and it's actually really fun because it's bringing back um 
some things that I kind of abandoned because I, I mean, it was 2010. So about 11 years ago is when I really threw myself into felt making. But prior to that, I did a lot of painting. And as a, you know, as a young person, I did a lot of printmaking. And mm. so I really kind of abandoned that when I just really threw myself into the felt making because um, that was just opening up a whole world to me. And now that I'm bringing paper back, bringing paper into my practice, it also means that I can bring in printmaking and mark making so I can, there's ways of incorporating that into the felt work to bring more detail and mm -hmm. to express my ideas more articulate, articulately. <laughs> so that's very exciting. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, this is probably a good time for us to have a little tour of your of your studio. Um, I am, um, I could just not talk for a couple minutes or however long you want. And maybe we can just do a little uh, the viewers can see see some of your your incredible works there. Okay, sure. I'm just gonna move you along with me here. Okay. So I have this wonderful studio. It's a 540 square foot classroom um, in Place des Artistes de Ferrelton. Lots of nice light. Got my plants that survive my neglect. Behind me, you can see a sculpture. Uh, this one is from 2017. <clears throat> this is what I call um, boundaries. I think I call this one boundaries. <laughs> um, so I'll just show you a few things. I don't, I can't see what I'm looking at here. These are pieces that, um, these are semi-sculptural pieces. So you can see there's quite a bit of dimension to them. That's because of the flax that I use. The flax gives a lot of uh, structure to the pieces. This one has Highland cattle hair that was given by a neighbor, some bamboo and different types of wool and mohair. Pieces from 2019, I think. Just uh, a lot of imagery that, um, it's very sort of organic imagery that is kind of like images that you might see on a forest floor or from an aerial view. These are images that continue to really, really uh, speak to me because I feel like they're universal. There's a universal language to these kinds of forms that I'm really interested in. Um, which tie into some different themes that I'm going to be exploring with Nico in Art Beyond Borders. Uh, we talked about, um, perhaps uh, we talk about somehow creating visualizations of the network that connects us as we, as we uh, collaborate through digital space. What does digital, digital space actually look like? So uh, I think some of this imagery is going to come forward in the work that we do together. Um, so yeah, right now I have some pieces on the table. I'm just in the middle of working on them. Um, this is a piece that has a lot of loose fibers layered and, uh, laid out. Um, I've got three pieces here on the table that I'm still in the middle of figuring out exactly how I'm going to do this all. Um, Underneath this wool, there are resist materials. So there's actually color and different things happening underneath these layers that will come to light after I'm done felting them. I'll be able to cut them open and reveal some more detail that's embedded in there, but I'm also not finished building up the surfaces of these pieces. Um, so these pieces are actually using a technique um, that you can't really see how it's going to turn out at this stage, but using a technique of creating um, these three-dimensional branch-like, root-like um, structures, these guys. When this is felted, these are going to like stand up and be, you know, looking like like some kind of interconnected mm -hmm. system network. So this is a uh, prototype for. Um, something a technique that i want to use in this project mm -hmm. <laughs> that's extraordinary can you hear me 
Oh, I can't hear you. I just realized I need to put you back into the, there we go. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was absolutely amazing. Your pieces are so beautiful. And I just, uh, Thank you. yeah, the one that you're doing now, the, the, the one, the pieces that look like, they almost look like river stones. What, yeah. what is that? Um, those are pieces of pre-felt. So it's wool that has been felted to a certain point, but not completely felted. So I use that a lot in my work to create more distinctive shapes. So you can cut out shapes, felt them into the surface, and then go, once it's felted, cut and crisp out the edges. So you get these wonderful textures and amazing. Forms. Yeah. And then looking at those next to the, the, the roots, right? The, that's, that's really they're really stunning together yeah really amazing yeah yeah, yeah. i'm uh, yeah i'm excited for the piece that i'm i'm excited to get these finished so that i can start working <laughs> on the piece for art beyond yeah. borders which um is going to be quite different from what you see here i'm going to be making a dimensional piece using the paper to make it really light and really translucent in places and using that root structure to hold it all together. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Like what Suzanne, is it Suzanne Seamard says about the, the structure, the root structure under the trees, under trees, you know, that every, that it's all kind of intertwined, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. that, that network of communication. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's the other neat thing, uh, just thinking about the digital era is that They've, we've actually developed equipment now that can perceive these, that even the human body has this whole layer of a nervous network that we've not perceived before. And it's like this super subtle layer. And apparently this exists also in trees. And um, that just really captures my imagination to imagine, uh, uh, to visualize this as a network that actually subtly connects us to everything without technology, without the digital technology, but it's the technology that's allowing us to understand that that exists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's extraordinary. It's really, it's really fascinating to think about, isn't it? And to just be with, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, Hannah, about the, about supplies, because I, I talked to Nico Williams about this, and he was saying that you know, when COVID hit, he had a really hard time getting beads because he was ordering beads from Japan. And then he ended up uh, ordering them locally after that um, because of the breakdown in supply chain related, um, I guess, mostly um, to COVID. Um, have you had any kind of issues with materials in that, in that way? <laughs> um, I actually have such a wonderful abundance of materials right now. Um, uh, the one thing is that uh, to use, uh, because I'm going to be working, because I'm working with this telescopic lens, the materials really have to be, the, the details that I include in the surface have to be like really special. Uh, one of the best uh, sort of images from the videos that we've already created is this beautiful silk mohair that I use in the river. And it just has such a reflective quality and you know mohair with a nylon core would just not give the same effect as mohair with that silk core it's like ugh. and um, little curly bits that I include in the surface those are things that I've always hand selected from fiber shops or fiber festivals and they're really hard to order online and know what it is that you're going to get but I just put in a huge order online and I'm just you know, crossing my fingers that it's all going to be really beautiful and, and useful. Yeah, it's not like you can just order something online and reach into your computer screen and touch it and make sure that it that it works for you, right? Yeah, it's, um, yeah I think I saw or I, I think I might have seen that in the film with the well, there were so many amazing bits, but the just the there was one part one point where you just see one piece one fiber and it looks it's it's ir almost iridescent it has a it has um yeah it does have a silky a silky luminosity look, yeah. luminosity exactly um that's yeah. one of my favorite favorite parts of 
of that short film that that I watched. So uh, that's I I can see where yeah you want the materials to be really you know you want the best right yeah 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. thank you for allowing me to uh, visit your studio today and I'm glad it worked out uh, for us to uh, see it and uh, I know that you're um, anxious to uh, continue working on that project that you've got on that table so I just want to thank you so much for uh, for um, letting me visit your studio today and um, wish you the best rest of the day thank you so much Lisa it's great Thanks, to talk Anna. to you yeah bye-bye Hi.